The point here is that obviously, and this is a guy who, you know, his people, his minions, uh, oversaw the temporary banning of Caitlin Johnson for saying that John McCain's a warmonger and he's killed, he's responsible for the deaths of a lot of people, which is categorically true. Uh, so his leftist ideological viewpoint and, and those of the people in Twitter that he employs obviously informed uh, the decision to temporarily ban Caitlin Johnson for saying bad things about John McCain. Which is bizarre because John McCain, because he's a lefty, but John McCain's fully on the right. Surely someone like Jack Dorsey and the Twitter bots and, and, and the Twitter minions would all be big up in anybody who took a shot at John McCain because he's a diehard conservative, supposedly. Y no, because left and right isn't... It doesn't matter anymore. Well, you know what else? Well, uh, no, it, 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 left and right people across the board and, and groups of websites like Counterpunch or whoever, all the way to right individuals like Mark Dice, they're all getting hit. Everyone depend it just depends on the it usually depends on the specific content. Well, it, it and it, basically the more truthful it is and the more punishing it is, punishing in quotes to the official narrative, but it becomes a problem. Well, here's here's the other thing: uh, if we put all these people together, Twitter, Facebook, blah blah blah, YouTube, that they're all uh, part of the lefty, left leaning kind of uh, Marxist ideologues or ide ideology that's that's kind of you know that all the conservatives have to fight against. Um, well, then Facebook recently, for example, um, again, temporarily banned uh, a website, VenezuelaAnalysis.com, mm -hmm. yeah. which is basically the only English language uh, a website that gives in-depth uh, reporting on what's happening in Venezuela. And they're very much pro-Venezuela, and they're very pro-Maduro and anti-American, anti anti uh, American imperialism, all that kind of stuff, and that's what they say um, when in their in their post on the web on their on their Twitter feed, they had to go to Twitter to announce that they were banned from Facebook, and they basically said that the only things that they put up in the previous days when before Facebook banned us was um, a talking about uh, the attempted uh, assassination of attempt, Maduro, att assassination of Maduro, and other. Uh, other details about about American influence in Venezuela, and that's fully again that's fully a leftist thing because the Venezuelan government is supposedly radically leftist. Mm -hmm. So surely Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and stuff should be supporting Venezuela analysis and not banning them for pointing out the excesses or the the crimes of U.S. imperial imperialism in Venezuela. <laughs> But but then maybe you get into a corporate point where basically this these people are they're, 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 they, these platforms like Twitter and, and, and Facebook and and YouTube are serving the interests of the U.S. political elite, and at that point there is no left or right ideology. So anything that as long as you so basically today by any of these so-called leftist platforms you'll get deplatformed or banned for being too right wing. But you'll also get deplatformed for any for saying anything that this is American exceptionalism, which is kind of right wing, right? Because it's pro imperialist. So these, uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, it's a bit confusing. As it's, you, as you can but um, one thing I, I noticed was that censoring of Alex Jones, the banning of Alex Jones, his Infowars, and all that kind of stuff. Not that it really matters. He's a bit of a crazy person, but um, <clears throat> it kind of it just happened without a much of a. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of noisy people are making making a bit of a ruckus about it, but it, it's kind of done and dusted type thing, you know. It's 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 gone and passed with not much more than a, a bit of a whimper, you know. Um, and and but now people are expecting more to happen. Basically, there's going to be more the platform. It's just the first the first uh, shot, you know, when the in, in the new censorship of, of, of truth, let's say. Um, but the people who are up in arms about it and talking about it, you know, particularly the kind of alt-right type people, you know, uh, people have long-form podcasts, Joe Rogan and Stephen Crowder and people like that on YouTube um, who are sounding the battle cry and stuff, they don't really seem to realize that they're just, that they're playing into a, a kind of a dynamic there, that there's a broader dynamic that they're missing, which is that, Obviously, by deplatforming and banning Alex Jones, you're going to get a bunch of 
right-wing conservative type people up in arms about censorship, which mm -hmm. is going to just entrench them in their positions, which was which just, it doesn't help, it doesn't solve the situation, you know. Well, it's it, it spawned Senate hearings and right. uh, another one of the, it's Diamond and Silk, those right. two African American ladies have been up there de 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 defending their piece. On the one hand, on the face of it, it's like, oh, well, good, at least it's somewhere, somewhere there's a venue for them to voice their response to it and plead their case. But, um, yeah, it, the, the broader point here is a lot of the sites in the United States, the conservative-leaning, like Gateway Pundit, um, they're only seeing and they're pumping out the lists of bloggers slash website, from Alex Jones to Diamond and Silk, who are being targeted because they're conservatives. Right. And they're completely ignoring the 20 other who would make up an alternate list of the lefties, in quotes, who are also getting it. You right. mentioned Venezuela analysis, dot com. The biggest one from Latin America last week was well, kicked tel off Telesaur. Telesaur. That's like yeah. RT for Latin America. It was right. booted off Facebook. So we're talking about general censorship here then, really. Oh, yeah. It's not just about left or right. It's basically there's a push for, for, for general censorship and, and sanitizing the, the discourse in, on, on social media. That everything has to be above board. You can't say anything bad or about anything. Basically, everything has to be... I think it has to be polite and nice. Jo and Jordan friendly. Peterson said they've opened Pandora's box because mm. they went from saying we're just platforms, right? We're not publishers, and now they're saying we're publishers. We decide what we're does and does not, and they're, where are they going to go? And you can see it's probably a testimony to the difficulty they're having with deciding what to do and when. That sometimes someone is totally banned. Sometimes they get three strikes and they're out for a while. Sometimes they're out altogether. Sometimes they're only down for 12 hours. Sometimes they get a 30-day, and it's coming back. Sometimes you can appeal it successfully and so mm. on. They're, it's all in flux, and it's like, what the hell do we do? And I think Jack Dorsey, in fairness to them, him and Zuckerberg, do you remember those hearings a few months ago mm. when Zuckerberg was hauled up there? Yeah, we all made fun of him, and that was fun to do, but the guy was actually sitting there going, well, I'm not supposed to be here. You're, you're basically asking me, to be the censor. Mm -hmm. How the how do we know? I don't know when to Jesus. And he really he's sincere, so to speak, in at least that he is not able to morally tell because he is a bit of a robot what is or is not proper. But he was being pounded at by these congressmen and they have voices behind them too, saying, You better sort this shit out or we're gonna pull whatever resources we ha we have to to basically trash your company, we'll threaten to regulate you will stop the CIA backing or whatever other DARPA type things give Facebook the legs it needs mm. to stand. You know, he's like, oh, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, whatever you say. And he's trying his best to mimic the orders he's getting from on high. Mm. So I wouldn't direct, if I was getting angry about it, I wouldn't be directing it so much at these CEOs who are really just bless them, they're a bit naive and they're learning now about power and information mm. in mm. a way that their ideological roots when they were beginning their projects never really taught them. Mm. Um, right. They're all learning like the rest of us that there's an, a, a powerful narrative dominating center, maybe not located in one place, but in existence and it is, t it decides what is and is not. And they're all rapidly, it's like that book about how in Nazi Germany people they weren't really sure what the Fuhrer wanted. But what they would do is look to the Fuhrer and try to guess in their minds what rules he wanted implemented and go about and test it. Did that please the Fuhrer? Yes, it didn't. Or no, it didn't, Christ. Oh, but we won't pass that law. Oh, but they like this law. Right, get them in there. Get the Gestapo out there. Everyone is basically looking to the Fuhrer, except that the Fuhrer today isn't the moustache guy going like this. It's basically pretty nameless and faceless. Mm -hmm. Maybe Brennan's one of them, but uh, that's yeah. <laughs> he too would be a bad man for someone else, but um, he's, he's going to be pretty close to the kind of circles where, yeah, the, the orders come down or wishes are expressed and somebody please sort this out. And then everyone starts jumping around trying to second guess whatever the powers that be, the gods that run this, this whole shit show want. Um, and they're, they're, those guys, they're dancing like the rest of us. <laughs>